All right, what's going on, brother? What's up, man? I heard you were getting like super into conspiracy theories. Oh my god, get out of here! I'm just fucking with you. Uh, so I, I do want to talk to you about Iowa, though. Uh, what's up? Um, so I, I was listening to you for a little bit there, and uh, like the picture that you were painting with these financial backers of this app, and um, <clears throat> you weren't you weren't saying that there's a literal conspiracy, but you 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 were sort of like backhandedly implying that there was some kind of foul play at work here. And I was just wanted to give you the opportunity to, I think it's criminal negligence. Hutch. Expand. I think well, that, I think sure. that all of these people that hang out with one another, get propped up into positions of power and make meaningful and not so meaningful and sometimes insignificant changes in the electoral process. And I find that to be the, the biggest conspiracy of all, which is people who are rich uh, will back up their own class interests over the interests of democracy or a fair and free election. Um, that's the big conspiracy behind all of this. Uh, I don't think that there is like uh, anything beyond that. That's what I'm alluding to. But, but, but I don't know. That wasn't the vibes that I was getting right here. It's, it's it, <clears throat> like, so for example, like the, uh, the flub with the votes that were supposed to go to Bernie that went to, who were those two people? It was, uh, um, what were their names? Deval Patrick yeah. and Tom Steyer. Right. Damn, you yeah. can't even remember their names, dude. I don't give a fuck about that. No, I'm just like, saying, like that's what? how that's how little that's how insignificant they are. <laughs> right, and that's precisely the reason why the idea that the Iowa Democratic Caucus team or whatever would deliberately and try to just like sneak in a few votes for these two candidates that have absolutely zero chance, that would require stupidity and hubris on a level probably never before seen. I do I mean, think that, that they be, have that kind of stupidity and that kind of hubris, though. Um, you look, think that these are all these enough? are all coincidences. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, though. You think they would be stupid enough to try to sneak votes to two candidates where it would be very obvious that they were well outperforming their polling, and there's a paper trail? You think that they would be that stupid? Oh uh, yeah, I do. I find that about as I implausible think... as you could possibly. I mean, that is uh... okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, I do. I, I, I legitimately do. I legitimately do. Um, but most importantly, the real conspiracy or conspiracy is in, in the legal term, like the well, where they're conspiring, I think, is in the reporting. We already well, know see, that there is an established, a well-established. OK, uh, let me ask you this much. Do you yeah. think that um, Democratic strategic strategists would be so stupid and so confident that they would literally uh, correspond back and forth with members of the DNC about different ways of hurting Bernie Sanders. Are we going, we're going back to 2016. I mean, well, that's the only, that's the, that's the closest, uh, it's like the closest example we can use. If we're on a murder trial and we don't have enough evidence, let's say that, okay. uh, someone is a murderer I'm probably going to use the fact that he murdered someone before and it was and it was outed for being a murderer not that long ago in an identical well, scenario as an example for why this could happen again. Yes. Well, you're implying an equivalence. And on the one hand, you're talking about wildly unethical uh, email correspondences. And on the other hand, you're talking about voter fraud, like literal voter fraud that it would take maybe five minutes to figure out that they had done it. And also, these are individual bodies, right? Like, we're, the discrepancy... Well, they, they almost that, got that, away with it if it wasn't for us meddling kids, you know? It, well, it, that the, the problem was that the error was you so obvious the that they were uh, pollsters were able devil. to pick up on the error Six immediately. Uh, and you're comparing that with, like, the DNC emails from 2016. I don't, I don't see that as a... Well, I mean, my, you, big, my big conspiracy i'm saying that that could happen the deval patrick thing could have been an accident and it could have definitely been on purpose um but my big conspiracy is the media rollout of the way that they looked at these numbers the way that they crunched the numbers in a way that was favorable to people to judge and um in you, an effort to do by, so what, in an effort you, to do you, so wait hold on let me just finish this and then you okay. can retort in an effort to do so they may have accidentally added some uh deval patrick numbers in there in that commotion where they were trying to push out as many favorable numbers for people to judge as possible and carve out areas where Bernie Sanders was winning. Do you think that that well, is, that is f like super far 
uh, uh, super outside of the bounds of imagination and reality. Well, what do you mean by crunching the number? You said that they they were crunching the numbers. So to there's make a way to look at the fit. Yeah. So there's a way to look at different precincts, and there's a way to reveal delegate numbers, right? There's a way to uh, reveal delegate numbers. Uh, if you have uh, certain districts and certain precincts where uh, Bernie Sanders is actually uh, weighted better than okay. Pete Buttigieg, and you are looking at 62% of the entire map, you can okay. you can craft that 62% to be favorable to Pete Buttigieg. This is like pretty basic statistics, right? Like, okay, but, yeah, but also you can massage I mean, the talking... numbers in a way where probably Bernie Sanders' campaign did as well when they revealed their 40% number and their 60% number, where they were massaging the numbers to show um, caucuses where Bernie Sanders was clearly the winner to beef up their numbers. Well, Bernie Sanders uh, performs really well in extremely populous areas yeah. of Iowa. So it stands to reason that those extremely populous areas would take longer to tabulate the votes. Right? Um. Yes, that's one argument, I mean, certainly. That uh, populous I, areas, yeah, uh, popular areas that, could be harder to uh, to calculate the votes on, but... Or, I don't think that's an argument, though. I think that that's just an established fact. Well, like, there's no going around that. Well, then, then I then I ask you this question: Why has it taken three days? <laughs> uh, do you see what I'm saying? Well, there's 1,700 counties, and I mean, I don't. I fucking mean, know well, it took. Well, last the year when there, there was only manual reporting, uh, last time around when there was only manual reporting and in in the same amount of turnout, uh, maybe a little bit lower than this uh, year's turnout, and even in 2008 when there was a much much higher turnout. Uh, sure. It took way less time to report on this stuff. Way less time. It took a third of the time thus far. It's been three days and we still haven't gotten all the numbers. Sure, but you can imagine how disruptive an app completely failing on the night of... Yeah, I know, but that's when they switched over to manual. Uh, that's when they immediately should have switched over and uh, claimed that they switched over to manual reporting. Where I, w where I will agree with you is I disagree with the decision of releasing any partial results. I would have just rather, I would have rather to, uh, to wait. I mean, I don't care if it takes a week or two weeks. Uh, don't give me the results at 62%, 72%, because I do think that, that um, if it turns out that Pete ends up with less delegates than Bernie, then that did help him. But if it did, if it turns out that he's going to end up with more delegates than it's sort of inconsequential, maybe apart from like fundraising, that sort of thing. But you mentioned but that's, that he, he, that's, that's you, you, insanely but, consequential. The fact that Pete Buttigieg sure, rolled in yeah. confidently and declared himself victorious uh, after it, when two percent of the poll results were only released. Remember, originally only two percent of the poll results were released, and Pete said he is uh, the victor, and he started well, the, and he started fundraising. Well, on that. Well, they had the, they had their own internal numbers, so they weren't going off the two percent figure, though. No, I know. Well, so did Bernie, but you didn't see Bernie Sanders uh, declaring victory. Yeah, I mean, Bernie, he, you didn't see he... Bernie Sanders running around no, and no. and uh, fundraising off of that. You didn't see Bernie Sanders get a a big five percent bump on a New Hampshire polling. You didn't see Bernie Sanders put out like twelve different tweets immediately and and eight different campaign emails. Uh, to to claim that he was the victor in Iowa, which you know was was triumphant, and well, that what if it, what Iowa if, had I mean, uh, it, won just well, like just like Barack Obama, Iowa had now defeated homophobia, basically. Well, what if I mean, what if it turns out that Pete does get more delegates, and he did actually win? I mean, popular vote aside, I'm just talking about the amount of delegates. So, like, what wouldn't doesn't that? Do you mean state delegates or delegates in general? Because like they're gonna get the same amount of delegates ultimately, with maybe one more delegate that Pete might get one more delegate. Then that would be a Pete victory, right? I mean, I don't like it, but it would be a Pete victory. That would be a that would be a marginal Pete victory only because of the way that state delegates are weighed uh, in rural areas. So yes, yeah, it's both. I would no, still consider that to be. Yes, I would still consider that to be Bernie Sanders' victory, considering that electability uh, is the the only reason why we look to Iowa as a significant factor. And electability is much better <clears> matched up with the popular vote, which Bernie Sanders won not only in the first alignment but also in the second alignment as well by a clear margin. Um, so Pete Buttigieg's victory in that circumstance would literally be because he had good RNG in certain, uh, precincts and, uh, some of the precincts that he won in, uh, had, uh, more, more delegates afforded to them, uh, by, uh, like more delegates afforded to them. Uh, per capita than the more populous districts that Bernie well, Sanders. I, yeah, won. I think that's a good. It's a, it's, I think it's a good, uh, worthy thing to attack the process because the process itself is fucked and anti-democratic. And I think we should oppose all processes that are anti-democratic. But 
uh, I think that would be more productive to focus on those things instead of going down these rabbit holes, implying foul play when there are pretty like basic explanations for why this thing that appears to be super nefarious played out the way that it did. Like with the two examples being that we already discussed, the more populous areas taking longer to vote uh, or tally the votes. And then also, um, what was the other one that we mentioned? I mean, I, I think that I think that when you, when you do that, you run the risk of uh, fomenting a sense of apathy and depressing turnout in November. And really, we're just talking about uh, Iowa. We're talking about you know, I think, a state that's pretty I think any other candidate. I know, but I think any other candidate that got this like that got this much open disdain, uh, any other candidate uh, that was uh, this openly railed against by mainstream media and also by institutions of power that are supposed to at least create the uh the the aesthetics of a fair and free process here uh would would get round the clock media coverage you don't would get round the, the clock justice. criticism from the you media i mean the one of the devil. most one of the easiest Grab examples is like the shadow application people that founded it were openly against bernie sanders they're like they've been logged in media for being openly against bernie sanders um okay not only that but also like the shadow application follows 79 accounts on Twitter, relatively new. One of the one of the accounts that they were following openly. Remember, this is supposed to be the application that is calculating the votes. Okay, reporting the votes back you to the DNC. The this application's okay. website or you this application's Twitter account was following devil. the Democratic Thank majority God for Israel, for which is the okay. first for super PAC Thank that uh, started Brexit. creating anti-Bernie ads. Brexit. I, I okay. think that's significant. That's a significant conflict of interest. I think that. Pete Buttigieg's campaign uh, uh, advisor being married to the person who owns the application is a significant conflict of interest. I think Pete okay. Buttigieg and Joe Biden and numerous other moderate uh, campaigners using Shadow and, and paying that vendor for other uh, SMS uh, management uh, uh, contracts, that's not necessarily as big as a conflict of interest as more that is just that's regular corruption and, and, and you know, the anti-meritocratic... Uh, uh, ways that uh, politics uh, operates in this country. It's normal for everyone to go for Hillary consultants. That's just the way it does. But do, right, you, but appearance... do you agree with all the things that I just said so far? Like it is a yeah. conflict of interest. <clears throat> right? sure. I, the, the, the appearance of a conflict of interest or a conflict of interest itself is something that I, th I do think needs to be addressed within the, um, uh, the, the, the entire body of the DNC. They clearly haven't learned like all the lessons that they should have learned, but there's a paper trail. And it doesn't matter that he that the 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 shadow app whatever follows seventy nine people on Twitter and maybe it's like yeah. But the, what do you think if it wasn't for a, independent there's a, reporting? Well, hold on, but but there's a it, it doesn't matter. There's a paper trail. Like there was going to be independent reporting regardless. That's not going to go away. I agree. So I, I said this before so, too. I said that a, a caucus is impossible to rig. A caucus is the worst thing that you could try to rig. And this is the only way. If you were to like try to rig a caucus, um, or if you would try to deflate. For example, the results of a caucus by by uh, maybe making it seem like it's illegitimate. This is the only way you you could do it potentially. And I think that that is the part it's, where it, they so, they don't put their so they don't put their finger back, on the th uh, they don't put their thumb on the dial and just uh, kind of pull back. And uh, when, for example, one of the most important fail safes, which was uh, direct call like the call center uh, getting manual reporting from precincts not working yeah. at the time. That I okay. think that I think knowing full well that Bernie Sanders was leading, leading up to the night in the DMR poll that they literally did not even release because of Pete Buttigieg, remember? And uh, and no. everyone starting to talk about how like Bernie Sanders was going to surge in Iowa, I think was the reason why they were like, it's fine. It's fine if we just like don't uh, do our due diligence here. And I think that they literally exploded the Iowa caucus on purpose that is, that is and, and destroyed the Iowa caucus exclusively because they thought this would be the perfect way to at least try to tamper the Bernie momentum that he would get from Iowa. There's no, there's no actual evidence of that being the case and them doing that defies all logic. That doesn't make any sense that they would do that. What that they I would mean, do what? That they would literally try to torpedo the, the, the rollout of the results in Iowa so that it would benefit uh, Pete Buttigieg. I think it's not Pete Buttigieg. It. it would. It would. It's not about benefiting one person or another. It's Just about. about it's Bernie. about diminishing the importance of the Iowa caucus, diminishing the legitimacy of the Iowa caucus, and diminishing the the importance of the Iowa caucus by being negligent to the point of of almost criminality. 
being negligent to the point where it's like it doesn't really matter. Criminally, cr what crime do you think was committed? I mean, negligence, yeah. But I mean, what crime well, we just talked about voter fraud, didn't we? Like literally uh, putting criminal negligence in the circumstance is adding Deval Patrick, uh, adding Deval Patrick uh, uh, delegate numbers in counties where uh, that where Bernie Sanders is supposed to have those delegate numbers. That's it, criminal negligence. Not, okay. That's literally yeah, criminal it, negligence. Okay. okay, is if if it was done deliberately, but it, is it not? completely conceivable that these uh, workers, um, staff members, people that are tallying these votes, people that have been tallying these votes for two days now are just fucking tired and it's chaotic over there and there was human error involved. That Certainly. Just, me, Certainly. That seems um, way more plausible than this shadowy app company deliberately trying to torpedo this whole process as a way to hurt Bernie Sanders. You also have to consider the Negligence fact, too, doesn't have to be deliberate, by the way, just me, for the record. Just, sure. I, no, I, I'm not denying that there was negligence and uh, uh, really poor performances by the Iowa caucus people or whatever. I'm not, I'm not trying to discount the mistakes that were made over there in terms of the decision process or the de decision making process. None of that. But what I'm just trying to do is try to get you to see that there are way, way more plausible explanations. And what you're doing is you're piggybacking off of one super implausible explanation to another, to another, and by the time you're done, it's like Wait, five. Wait, really? Totally implausible. Yes, I you find don't think it's a, you don't think it's a comp, but you already admitted that it's a conflict of interest. So you and I are not even in disagreement. That but that doesn't imply that it's likely that they would deliberately torpedo. The other thing too is like you have to think about the fact that well, the, the deliberate DNC, torpedoing the, the, comes let me, from. Let me just, let me just say my point real quick. Like, okay, the, DNC, the, the DNC, the uh, DNC, they understand that they had. Um, uh, a ton of pressure on them. They 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 knew that there were going to be, uh, s there was going to be so much more scrutiny to their decisions during this primary process than there was in 2016. And you would have me believe that these people, knowing full well that everyone is looking at them, knowing full well that they were probably instr not probably they were instrumental in Hillary Clinton's failure in 2016 knowing all of that they would still go through the incredible uh decision to <laughs> nuke the entire process in a way that it, it is incredibly easy to detect yes i like your energy hassan i do uh, i yes but i don't one thousand percent <laughs> And I, like I am on the energy. and I am on the lighter end of that spectrum of like criminality and conspiracies. And I still think that they would one thousand percent do this. Hutch, I mean, you are a big Noam Chomsky fan, and you are definitely further to the left than most liberals I talk to. So you already know that this hubris happens quite frequently in uh, in institutions that believe they have uh, c full control over over what we consume in media. I think this that's is beyond, the only reason why we know about any of this or the only reason why we're skeptical about any of this is literally because of the internet and because of independent journalists uh, and and because how much because of how much transparency there is now. I mean they're literally crying about the transparency on CNN talking about how this all pro the, these problems occurred because Bernie Sanders asked for additional transparency to make sure that this was a more I democratic process. I can now remove I had a more charitable line. reading of that than you did. I watched that clip. You could easily interpret that to mean that we are in a mess and it and it started because of this uh, decision. So why did Ed O'Keefe say it on CBS with even clearer terms where he directly I said I we wouldn't have clip, and, and again like this isn't like when I say conspiracy, I don't mean uh, I don't mean that like there is a talking point that someone is giving out, like a shadowy person is giving out to every single person. In some instances, that literally happens, like Heritage Foundation and different think tanks on the right literally give talking points to Republicans, so they all have the same messaging. That's one thing. But when we're talking about manufacturing consent, when we're talking about mainstream media and these uh, supposed like. Uh, outlets that are they're supposed to create like uh, they're supposed to do adversarial journalism and, and be a check uh, be another like checking force on uh, people in positions of power more often than not people get elevated to those positions uh, you don't become Ed O'Keefe by doing adversarial journalism you become Ed O'Keefe by doing uh, somewhat adversarial journalism or merely giving the appearance of uh, doing conducting adversarial journalism okay. while also uh, okay, yeah. Well, you're, you're not going to also you're not, pushing out whatever whatever uh, those other institutions of legitimacy feed you. You're not going to hear me uh, disagree with you about your points. About, I, I think you make legitimate points about the anti-Bernie bias in mainstream 
uh, news media outlets. But a logical continuation of your proposed, you don't I don't want to call it conspiracy because I don't want to offend you, but you your, your proposed father, plan devil. to torpedo this them? Iowa process breath? to... Uh, perhaps hinder Bernie ch Bernie's chances. The logical continuation of that conspiracy theory, I'm, I'm going to call it that, is that uh, they with. literally want to lose. Like That's the only thing that makes sense because they had to, you had to have assumed that you would have gotten caught with a paper trail. With a paper trail with, with votes that are counted in public. So to, don't you think that people to, that are so tried, stupid that they like couldn't even reveal numbers or use an application that wasn't controlled that an application that literally had um that an application that had that exact paper trail that you're talking about that showed a flagrant conflict of interest would be stupid enough to think like in the in the rush of all of this uh we're going to do a slow rollout and delegitimize the importance of the Iowa caucus but uh that's a that's a you know that's I don't know. an this L we're, hugely, we're willing to but, take exclusively this, so we can minimize uh, the... I don't, I don't know. They're, they're not minimizing the importance of Iowa. In fact, in, I would argue that the opposite is happening right now. Now there's 10 times more attention on Iowa because of this. They're not taking away the importance of Iowa. It's just unclear who won at the moment. No, we still have what, like 20... no, wait, wait, wait. You can't say that, like, I'm willing to bet that we will never use the same kind of caucus system that we've used. As a matter of fact... I know for a fact that Nevada is no longer using the shadow app, for example, in their caucus. So obviously it has literally delegitimized some of the the reporting not, that was going to be used no, in the not, Iowa caucus. But it, like hasn't the, it happened in, it in hasn't a matter of days. But it hasn't de delegitimized the process. It hasn't de it, 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 maybe it did, right, the it, not the process. It hasn't delegitimized the results. Didn't go to the you Rust can't Bell. possibly delegitimize the laugh. results. The integrity of the Iowa caucus is is pretty fucking firm in terms of how they're counting these votes. No, I the think the, no, they're they're deflating the they're deflating the importance of Iowa results by muddying the waters with uh the the like different kinds of reporting and and uh putting out wrong numbers, incorrect numbers or massaged numbers rather that favored Pete for the for two news cycles now, almost three uh by the end of tonight. I don't know what you mean by. I think it's a TV. bet because I I was watching a, uh, uh, I don't usually watch a ton of CNN and MSNBC anymore, but I did tune in yesterday to watch some of the coverage. That's not what I'm seeing on those on those news stations, and I watch probably like two or three hours collectively between them. The vibes that I'm getting from everyone right now is that there's just a bunch of confusion. Today was a little bit different because the numbers continued to improve for for Pete, but yeah, the numbers continued to improve for Pete there was until even Nate Cohen of the New York Times's upshot said. I can no longer with clear confidence report on these numbers anymore after what right. we found out in in Black Hawk County. Uh, the Black Hawk County uh, results were changed uh, to reflect something different than the reality on the ground. So, yeah, I think that in, like I said, while they were rushing uh, to deliver these results or while they were trying to massage the results as best as possible, and what I mean by that is like, look at counties where Pete was outperforming and do a slow reveal. We already, we already did that. We already talked about that. Like yeah. it, it, it is going to take them longer to count votes in more populous areas. And those are the areas that Bernie does the best in. That's, okay. There's just such a simple explanation. Well, there's, that. No, that's not necessarily true either, because on the one hand, you're getting it from one precinct. On the other hand, you're getting it from like 10 precincts. So like, uh, so there's like different there. You literally have to look into, you literally have to spend more time, but regardless of that, I told you, you could do this in less than three days. It has been done in less than three days, Hutch. So why is it taking three days? Why, why are there counties where why are there counties where people are reporting that they've sent in their ballots the uh, approximately Wait, 24 right? hours ago and no one has touched them yet? Why is it productive to sp speculate? at the level that you're doing right now in like five different directions because this because picture, one of the results of the counties were deliberately fixed so much so that scene. new york times is even you questioning the results your favorite point. candidate i mean that does, that does not seem productive to me wait hutch now we're okay i i don't mean to do this to you but now you're moving the goalposts over to like product productivity of this argument or productivity no, that's of this been conversation my, that's been my, no that's been my premise the entire time Okay. That, well, that, I, I feel, well, the I, main I think premise. That, no, I think the main premise was there isn't devil. like there isn't criminal negligence or there isn't like point, any matter of conspiracy, and it is simply just people, um, you know, people just uh, fucking up over and over again. Ineptitude. Ineptitude. Yeah, ineptitude. But like so much ineptitude that like 
so much ineptitude in every part, in every in every element of this process that has never happened before to this level ever, and it's happening suspiciously uh, in the hands of people who have openly shown disdain towards Bernie Sanders, for example, at a time when um, at a time when in the final surge that Bernie Sanders got uh, in Iowa, most people were most people believed that he was going to be the clear winner in Iowa and were uh, very upset about it, trying to even delegitimize the uh, Iowa caucus's importance in media. People like Jennifer Rubin in Washington Post, for example, writing about how important Iowa was uh, in 2019, were writing about who cares about Iowa anyway, literally a day before the I, Iowa yeah, caucus. Awesome. I can now remove right. the yeah. full hat. So you I mean, don't think that there's a deliberate effort by people in positions of power to, to, to no, minimize the impact of Iowa when they well, found out that Bernie Sanders was surging? Now you're being really general about it. I mean, we're, I was having a conversation about the the actual apparatus, like the political apparatus in Iowa, and now you're extending this conversation to include members of mainstream media that have no. It was bias. I've I've always included it. That's why I said the slow rollout by mainstream media was was uh, one thousand. Like the way that the mainstream media covers this stuff is also deliberate and there is back and forth communication between mainstream media and the dnc i don't think that that's a conspiracy at all i think that was well established in 2016 that's why i brought back the 2016 conversation for you earlier sure but but you mentioned suspicion earlier you're jumping straight from suspicion to conviction it sounds like you're like you have a strong conviction that there is a, a massive conspiracy and, and foul play at work to um uh so much so, I mean, like, and it goes beyond just the normal anti anti Bernie bias, but so uh, uh, bias, but so much so that they would be willing to torpedo the process itself in a way that yeah. would be so easily detectable, as as is evidenced by the fact that it was easily detected immediately in terms of the discrepancy between the voting. I mean, I think that um, I have enough. I have a clear precedent uh, uh, in in uh, like where I'm coming from. But yes, I I do believe that um, if yeah. if there are uh, articles being written in mainstream media ahead of time, ahead of the Iowa caucus, as soon as it was found, it, as soon as it was like almost a certainty that Bernie was going to get the final surge and potentially win Iowa. Um, when the DMR poll gets, uh, the DMR poll does not get released. The most significant poll um, that that has like a, an incredible yeah, over uh, one discrepancy too. What? Over one, over one instance of his name being omitted. I mean, that seems. Yeah, over over a, a completely ridiculous like, and it would wasn't even omitted. Wait, would, it wasn't even Pete, omitted. It was reported that the 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 uh, the person one time didn't hear his name, and then uh, the, the 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 polar the used hat. a different la the like was not would he have misspelled uh, people to his last name or incorrectly said people to his last name. Okay, what, would, do, would he have had legal grounds to sue the polls, the polling agency if they would have? I don't. I don't think so. Me. I'm, sorry. I'm just wondering what I'm that thought process I don't think so, because there is a margin of error in this circumstance, and that fits well inside of the margin of error. I guess that you could sue anyone for anything, but it definitely falls in the margin of error. If it was yeah, a larger, if it was a sure. deliberate uh, and, and larger discrepancy, uh, then you could account for it immediately. This is why I get frustrated sometimes when, when we have our talks, because there's so many things that I agree with you on, and I should completely share your frustrations. And then, and then there's a, these other things over here that, to me, just defy logic. The question I want to ask you is if Mayor Mayor Pete gets the ticket, are you going to stump for him? Are you going to canvas? You're going to get those fucking Am Mayor I going to canvas for Mayor stickers? Pete? No, I'm not going to canvas for Mayor. You're going to get some t-shirts, maybe some posters? No. Maybe um it. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie and and like you know, first of all, that's not going to happen regardless. But I'm not going to like I'm not going to like be as enthusiastic about Mayor Pete uh being the candidate against Donald Trump. Listen, if the libs want to if the liberals want to put Mayor Pete in a position of power, uh, and and they are they believe that they that he's the best candidate, then I'm sure they'll do fine on their own. Will I vote for him? Who knows? Uh, right now, whoa, whoa, it's too wait, early wait, to wait, tell. Wait. It's too early to tell. There's absolutely no reason to have this conversation whoa, at this point whoa, whoa. when the when Bernie Sanders still has the best chance of winning the Democratic candidacy. So I find sure. that conversation to be completely unproductive. Sure. Um, wait, 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 wait. Unproductive. Pete has a 25% chance. Bernie has a 33% a, a chance, right? Isn't that what Nate said? Yeah, but I don't care oh. about what Nate's polling is. My, Nate's analysis was horrifically you just incorrect. Up Nate's, polling. Nate's, no, but no. Nate's point and my points might converge because we're separately looking at the data, but that doesn't mean I'm working off of his, uh, I'm working off of his analysis as though it's my, uh, as though it's like uh, factually correct across the board, especially considering that Nate Bronze's, uh, uh, analysis was uh, 
just completely incorrect uh, uh, with uh, Joe Biden's uh, numbers in Iowa. He was completely wrong he about Joe Biden. Joe Biden got absolutely obliterated in Iowa, he and he had to readjust his. He, he literally had to readjust his expectations uh, as a consequence of that. So no, I don't agree with Nate Silver on everything. I think well, that gonna, I think that my analysis in this circumstance is is probably pretty similar I like to Nate. The system. I can uh, move but it but you can't commit right here, right now, that you would vote for Pete Silver. Buttigieg if you got the ticket against for. Donald I, I, like I said, I think it's an unhelpful and unproductive conversation. Nate Cohen is not Nate Silver. I know. We're just making conversation, though. Yeah, no, I, I, well, I think it's an un... Like I said, right now, we are not going up against Donald Trump. Right now, we are in the, we're the in the system. beginning phase of a, uh, of a primary season. Just so, I, am I, I, I don't... Doesn't mean you like, I don't uh, see the reason for why we have to talk about it. Does that make sense? We're not Nate Bronsty. Not really, because we're just having a conversation. And I just... Like, I find it kind of... That, to me, that to me is worrying a little bit, because if, if Bernie doesn't get the... Because if Bernie doesn't get the nomination, we are really going to need like everyone to show up and vote because the fucking Republicans are going to vote. Well, I did that in 2016 yeah, and look where we're at now. Exactly. Look where we're at now. I did that. that I did that exactly in 2016. Like the- I, I, I um, wholeheartedly backed Hillary Clinton, tried to get everyone to vote for Hillary Clinton. Right. Yeah. Talked about how much better Hillary Clinton was than uh, Donald Trump. And look where we got. You don't love Because after all... Justice. Yeah, we lost. And after, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying, Hutch. So my point well, we is... Lost, we lost because a bunch of people didn't show up to vote. Wait. I mean, that's... I think that's an that's the wrong way of looking at how politics is done. And it's at the heart of why Democrats keep losing, despite the fact that we have a moral majority in this country. It's one of many reasons why Hillary Clinton lost. But one of the reasons was that uh, voter turnout was not I, high enough. For, I think the expect, yeah, I know. But what what uh, what does a better job of increasing devil. voter turnout? Uh, you want an exciting candidate like Bernie yep, Sanders. Exactly. Do you think Pete you Buttigieg go. is an exciting candidate? No. That's okay, not the well, point, there you though. go. So maybe the, the DNC should do everything the point, they can. Though. The DNC should be doing everything they can to bring up an exciting candidate and prop up that exciting candidate that has the capacity to excite all of the bases. And that's what I'm saying. The most electable person, in my mind, is Bernie Sanders. I, I have agree. enough evidence to back that up, both on the I polling can... side and also uh, beyond the polling, where uh, Bernie matches up perfectly against Donald Trump's populist rhetoric. I think Pete does not. Pete is very much the same technocratic neoliberal that is, is boring, but just younger and gay. It's a new packaging uh, but it's the same old huh? ideas, Listen, and you, Americans you meant- are smarter <laughs> than what? No, you mentioned uh, Noam Chomsky earlier, and Noam Chomsky was uh, one of the things he said. Is that, I know I don't like, agree with everything Noam Chomsky says. You don't, well, you don't know what I'm going to say. I, I bet you you'll agree with me. But Noam Chomsky said that the most dangerous institution that exists in the world right now is the current GOP. So trust them now. Yeah, they I think right. that. Yes, time and I think that the current GOP enablers are not as culpable, but. Almost as cul- morally culpable. So number two would probably be the DNC. Number two most dangerous institution in the world would be the DNC. Oh yeah. Wait, why? Wait, you don't agree with that? You don't? You think the Republicans were alone in in conducting genocide? You think the Republicans are the only ones uh, that are like the clear villains? Hutch, you're so knowledgeable about this stuff, but it always shocks me when. You, you you have almost like blinders where you look you at certain things as uh, black and white. You. Um, I think that Democratic uh, senators and Democratic Congress members that allow the Trump agenda to continue are nearly as morally culpable as the Republicans that are enacting the Trump agenda. But beyond that, I think Democratic establishments in the past have done uh, the same kinds of things that the Republican administrations have done. It's just that the way we analyze this information is different because uh, uh, consent can be manufactured more successfully under democratic establishments. Uh, The reason why Donald Trump is so devastating right now with what he can do as far as executive orders, executive powers, is partially because of Barack Obama's expansion on those executive authorities. Do you, such, do you see what me, I'm saying? Such as? What do you mean? Give me an example of what you're talking um, about here. Drone, expanding drone strikes in, in seven countries and literally extrajudiciously targeting and executing American uh, citizens uh, with drone strikes. Uh, that's a that's seriously sure. an expansion of that's a serious expansion of American executive authority that Donald Trump has been utilizing. Um, what else? Sure. Uh, that's not even the only thing. I mean, look, 
Uh, what you say? He, he refused. You, you, to, uh, you, Barack you, Obama refused to prosecute uh, torture in the previous administration. Barack Obama refused to prosecute financial criminals from the previous uh, from from the 2008. A housing market crash. These are uh, he, absolutely he also, enabling. He, like these he, are absolutely enabling right. the same kind of business as usual politics that he American people are ended, tired of. He also en ended those uh, torture programs, and he also um, he did not. Uh, he did not uh, end those torture programs. As a matter of fact, under okay, well here's where, where you have your facts programs. wrong. Here's where you have your facts wrong. As a matter of fact, he literally made John Brennan the CIA director. John Brennan was you the guy who the hid the torture program. Yes. What did Donald Trump do? He took Gina Haspel, a woman, and he made Gina Haspel the, the, the just, executive wait, director no, no, no. of the CIA. Just, Gina Haspel right. was also another person who literally conducted the torture program. How did Barack Obama deal with this? He said, well, we tortured some folks. We're not going to look uh, backwards on this. We're going to look forward. And and he failed to uh, to to uh, appoint John Brennan originally, but then he did it in the second round uh, a couple months later. So, But you just said that he didn't end the torture programs, and he did. It was like one of the first things he did. No, the torture program was ended. The, the torture the, program the, ended the because the torture tactic. program ended because it was unsuccessful. The torture program ended because the information finally came out. He he personally tortured people as well. He said he was going to close Guantanamo Bay and he didn't. He, so torture continued under the Barack Obama administration as well in the form of, uh, for example, anal feeding uh, uh, food to. Uh, I'm, to, I'm to, talking about the specific program, the specific CIA yeah, you mean, program. You, yeah, okay, yeah. but it's there's still different kinds of anyway, torture, right? I think, right? I think it's we're getting just... a little... Well, hold on. I think we're getting a little too into the weeds in this one. The point that I wanted to make was Wait. you conceded that the GOP was... Uh, you conceded that the you agreed that the GOP is the most dangerous institution in the world. I agree that the GOP made, is the most dangerous you, institution you made, in the world. Wait, hold on, let me let me let me get, let me ask the question, Eric. Uh, okay. And then then you said that you think that the second most dangerous institution in the world would be the DNC. Yeah. So there has to be some kind of disparity there, right? Or there has to be some kind of. Um, yeah, there's a marginal there's the a two, marginal right? uh, difference between the two. Whereas the GOP does all of See, that, and then also <sighs> racially agitates. The Democratic Party does all of that, but does it with like a. With like a SJW, uh, I, diverse, I think, uh, with a diverse I, face when they're doing all of these things. I think that y your your premise right now is you're basically saying that Mayo Pete would be marginal, marginally better than Donald Trump. Is yes. what you're trying to say. And those marginal differences genuinely are impactful in and meaningful uh, when it comes to the changing the life of the populace uh, in significant ways. I agree with that for sure. Do I think Hillary Clinton would have been? Uh, better than Donald Trump in certain ways, absolutely. But in the long run, in the long run, it would have it would have been kicking the can down the road, and uh, the the Democratic Party under Hillary Clinton would have been just as uh, just as awful as the Democratic Party was under Barack Obama. The Democratic Party would have continued on with the awful radical uh, right wing agenda of the American Empire, uh, just as they will yeah, under Pete Buttigieg. There wouldn't have been a family separation policy. There wouldn't be uh, why. Tank, why do Why do you tank, say that? Wait, when, hold on. Wait. Hold on. Wait. Hold wait. Wait. On. wait, wait. Why do you say that when when uh, when I mean Donald Trump did uh, Donald Trump did utilize the same facilities that Barack Obama had created the the, same, and utilize the, the same. same For example, the, this is wait, like wait. 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 It's not the same policy. This family separation policy. No. Did it is. Not the, begin it is the Obama. identical policy. The enforcement is different. It is. On, I look. Here's what? the thing. Here's the reality. Wait. What? Yes, wait. It is an Explain identical that. policy. It is an Explain identical that. policy. The enforcement is different. Under Barack Obama, that policy was created so that you could separate families from children that were no. clearly being sex trafficked or separate families from children if you thought that those children were under distress. Now, that was... Uh, that absolutely, by the way, I'm 100% correct on this you, because there no, was activism around this. Yes. Uh, there was activism around this at the time against Barack Obama from uh, immigration uh, advocates who were seriously upset at this because they thought that it could be potentially it could be potentially abused, and it yeah. did. So when I say the Democratic Party, when I say the Democratic Party creates. Uh, the groundwork for Republicans to come in and do and enforce their white supremacist agenda. This is precisely what I mean. Another great well, example of this would be said it was another the, great example. Was the, wait, 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 hold on. You just said it was the exact same. It is the exact same policy. No, you create the groundwork. You create the, the groundwork for it no, to be. No, no, that's not true. Zero tolerance policy prosecuting everyone 
with a misdemeanor offense that comes to our border and tries to apply for asylum. Barack Obama deported three million people. He, but he he did not do the same policy that I'm talking about right now. And I'm not sticking up for Barack Obama's immigration policy. I was not a fan. But I, my point is that there are levels to the harm that we're doing by either electing a person from this party over here or this party over here. And I, I'm saying that the the consequences of those elections are much more extreme in terms of the different outcomes that you can get from each of those parties than you're making it out to be. I already, the, 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 I already mentioned this, Hutch. I, I already said that marginal differences in policy have drastic consequences on millions of Americans' lives. I'm not denying that, which is precisely I why I advocated for can... Hillary Clinton. But the reality is, we're this is not a Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump conversation. This is not a Pete Buttigieg versus Donald Trump conversation. Right now, we're in the point of this conversation where we're having a conversation about Pete Buttigieg versus Bernie Sanders, and then hopefully mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump. This is precisely why I consider this to be an unhelpful conversation to have, because there is no defeat in sight yet for Bernie Sanders. So no, I, no. I refuse to have I, I'm this not, conversation. And I'm, not a, I'm very optimistic that Bernie has a very good fucking chance at winning. Yeah. In my mind, I can, I can hardly like even process the, the idea of a Bernie Sanders. By the way, do you want me to continue on a, a lot of the other justice. stuff that uh, Obama you did that Trump expanded on? Devil. For example, really. the Muslim ban. Oh, and and no. like there is some truth to the way Republicans conduct themselves. Whenever they say stuff like, whenever they say stuff like, Oh, well, you know, we're just operating on Barack Obama's uh, plans. That's right. Like Barack Obama did seek to uh, uh, seek to um, halt or at least significantly curb back immigration for from six for six months from from uh yes from specific yes for six yes. months for specific that countries is, because okay because there because there were credible uh threats the coming in that there was going to be a massive attack on okay our well if you ask no uh, way, trump they think that there's credible threats violence. happening as well so that's what i'm saying but you and i both know that's bullshit though that, that, and, well, like, so why is it credible that, under obama but it's in, it's totally not credible under trump because Donald Trump is a liar, and he doesn't. He, you, you and I, but like, so I don't Barack even Obama. Have to explain but that. Barack Obama was a liar too. Yeah, now you're implying that Barack Obama not and to Donald the same Trump level of Donald equally, Trump. But that's my point. They're not equal. That's my point, and that's why I get confused that you would even balk at the question of whether or not you would support Mayor Pete if he was in the ticket against Donald Trump. But you say it's a. Barack Obama uh -huh. literally refused to prosecute Saudi Arabia or, or American citizens to prosecute Saudi Arabia for state sponsored terrorism. He openly advocated against this. Why do you think that I why do you think that I always say there is one party? There is only one party when it comes to certain issues in America, when it comes to waging wars and uh, endless wars and and continuing on the bloodshed of American imperialism and American empire, and when it comes to deregulating certain industries and especially giving tax cuts to the wealthy. Democrats do this as well. Republicans do it in way worse ways. And I'm sick and tired of this never-ending battle of choosing the lesser evil when we potentially have someone who can put a stop to that. And I that's why I like Bernie Dude, Sanders, like, and that's no, why I'm I think Americans like Bernie Sanders as well. I'm sick of it too, man. I'm, it makes me sick to my. Literally, makes also, me you sick like to Bernie Sanders. Sometimes, Obama's, like, Obama's <clears throat> advisors have literally stated that he is so threatened by uh, uh, Bernie Sanders' uh, potential candidacy that he said he might even campaign against him. Like he might do something to not, step in. He's not gonna. He's not gonna fucking do that, man. He's not. That was such a bullshit report. There's no way he's gonna do that. Okay, he spent we'll the see. entire four years or first three years of Donald Trump's presidency <clears throat> ignoring him. Like he had every opportunity to come out and be this public figure. And what has he done? He's just retired to his retirement home. Wait, on the exactly, coast. And, Hutch. And writing, it's almost he's like just writing, he's writing a book and he's just staying out of the whole discussion altogether. Yeah, it's, it, exactly. No it's almost like he wasn't the activist way. that he portrayed himself as in 2008 and is just a wealthy guy who got his bag and is now just living the high life, hanging out with fucking uh, Richard Man, Branson see, is, on islands with naked models. This is the fucking this, this this part of when you and I have these discussions is my least favorite part because I am not defending I'm right. <laughs> no because I'm not defending Hillary Clinton I'm not defending uh, neoliberal politics I'm not defending uh, Barack Obama I'm trying to make the point that as sick as we are of uh, a system whereby we have to choose between the lesser of two evils I also recognize that that is the reality that we live in and we can simultaneously work to move this country t more towards a progressive agenda while at the same time recognizing the reality that we live in. Uh, and, and I think that one, one way that we avoid that reality is by making statements like, well, there's not much of a difference between Barack Obama and Donald Trump, or there's not much of a difference. I didn't between say Barack that. Obama. I said that there are differences between Barack Obama and, and Donald did. Trump, but that's why I said the DNC or the Democratic Party is the second greatest evil on the planet. 
if the Republican Party is the greatest evil on the planet. I think Noam Chomsky would agree with that too, by the way. He probably would. I think you're right about that. But yeah. uh, but I think we... Um, if we didn't have an opportunity, if we only had Elizabeth Warren, I would still probably uh, have a wait, similar wait. take on this, where I would say Elizabeth Warren is, <clears throat> is by far the most progressive person in domestic policy. Her foreign policy is not as progressive as I'd want it to be. It's actually pretty bad, as a matter of fact. She's like advocated for Guaido as well to take over Venezuela. Uh, she was on the wrong side of the Bolivia situation. Like, um, she represents uh, a lot of the same uh, kinds of American, uh, America's cruelest uh, elements of foreign policy she represents those interests and i hate that but we don't have that right now we have someone who is beyond that we have someone who's actually progressive so that's yeah. why i always well, say i choose to not have the conversation about people to judge until well, we cross that bridge it feels like it feels like you're walking it back a little bit though because we, the way that you described it before is that there are marginal differences between the parties and then, uh, and then there are marginal differences. yeah there are marginal differences between the parties that lead to significant difference, like significant differences in the way that they enact it. There are uh, and, also, and, and that, there are that also significant, significant differences in people's lives. There, there are also significantly, uh, 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 significantly, di uh, significant differences between the parties. Like, like what? It depends on what we're talking about here. Look at healthcare, like what? man. What? You don't think that you don't think that the landscape of healthcare in this country would be drastically different if we had a democratic house and a firm majority in the Senate and a democratic president? It's kind of crazy that you say that considering we did have that. And what did Barack Obama do at that time instead of pushing and advocating for public option and making sure that his grassroots organization that was directly changed. created to advocate for the public option was under the DNC uh -huh. and no one pushed back when he had when he conceded to the Republicans when he literally didn't have to. So, yeah, I do think that Barack Obama's implementation of a Republican health care policy in the form of the ACA with like a couple uh, a couple leftist positions added on to it different. like uh, the elimination of pre-existing conditions was it is drastically different than what we had before it's not yeah, what but you and there's I a reason wanted, why the healthcare there's a reason why we're healthcare, talking about wait 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 we're talking about the difference between tens of millions of people being insured and uninsured that, we're also talking about healthcare premiums still skyrocketing and and uh people having a sick a, a serious problem with the way american healthcare is run and healthcare marketplace is in disarray currently and that is literally because we could not offer socialized medicine we should have offered socialized and medicine but instead a we did difference. a wealth transfer to uh private healthcare uh that they allowed that they that they still fought back on uh and and only allowed um because it was it was just Republican enough, and it was Republican. But but there's you're you're ignoring the fact that there are drastic differences. I love the system. That, I mean, I Obamacare versus pre-Obamacare. It is a huge mad. step in the yes, right direction. But, but Hutch, do you not, not do you not see this? Not Obama not didn't enough. just run on we're going to make healthcare marginally better. Obama ran on the public option. Obama ran on socialized medicine. Obama had Obama for America, which was That's a five hundred thousand grassroots activism organization specifically dedicated to uh, hit certain trigger points uh, where where uh, people were a, where people were where, where uh, representatives no, no, were. You're getting into a irrelevant te territory, though. The conversation is about Wait, how whether is that or irrelevant? Not... That's a drastic difference, dude. Because because the conversation is about whether or not the Republican if that party wasn't irrelevant, and the, if, if that was an insignificant party difference, are either, way, are either marginally different or extremely different. And I'm saying that there are c c areas of policy where there are caverns between the two parties. And this idea that we can just sort of lump them all together or imply that there are only marginal differences is extremely destructive. I wouldn't think. you say, wouldn't you say that it's a, it's, it's a marginal difference between the Republican and Democratic Party when Barack Obama is literally, his signature piece of legislation was created by the Republicans in 1992 at the Heritage Foundation and first implemented by Barack Obama's later opponent, Mitt Romney? Wouldn't you say that that's literally about, talking, a marginal difference talking, between the two parties instead of a drastically different health care no, program like the public no, option? No, I don't. No, because you're talking about one state and you're talking about a, a, one, a policy of one state versus the policy of uh, a country of over 330 million people. This, tens this of is millions suspiciously of getting into million. Republican talking point territory where like the funding Dude, of a I'm marginally, not sticking, the funding I'm not of a much sticking up for the ACA. I'm not saying that that's my ideal healthcare system. I'm t uh, the point I'm making is that it's still drastically different than what we had before. You could go to the hospital before and ha you could go to an insurance company. You're uninsured. You have cancer and they can just say, no. You can, yeah, now you can get insurance, pay them premiums, or literally you will get punished if you don't have insurance. Pay them premiums. Wait, hold on. Pay them premiums, 
and then the insurance company can charge you whatever the fuck they want or cover whatever the fuck they want. And those the 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 lack of coverage is getting to a, such a significant point now that Americans with platinum healthcare plans and full time jobs are having a hard time paying for their healthcare coverage. Do you think that that's an accident, or do you think that was a consequence of Obamacare not going far enough? Uh, well, I also think that the, President Trump has been uh, uh, tirelessly healthcare trying premiums to hobble, were rising under Obama too, not just President Donald Trump. What? Of course they were. Healthcare premiums rise all the time. What do you mean? Yeah, exactly. If only there was actual socialized medicine instead of a wealth transfer program to private insurance plan, uh, uh, private insurance providers uh, that that Barack Obama pushed for. Well, I feel like we're having two different conversations because the the point that I'm trying to make is that there are substantial differences between the parties. We should not be trying to put it out there that there's you know. Fucking Republican, Democrat, who cares? I love the system. Life's going to go on. Nothing's going to change. I mean, there's gridlock well, right now in, the, in Congress, CNN but in terms of setting the agenda, in terms of, uh, I mean, like the, the, the ACA oh, flipped between like 40% no and like 65% pro anywhere. popularity in the span of like two vote. years. So the majority of the country Still approves of that health care system. Also, majority of people want something else. But the point is, is that prog significant progress was made. It just happened to be using a model that a Republican governor used. And you just seem to be really hung up on that. And you're not. Well, I'm not just hung up not, on that. Not, I'm hung up seeing, on the fact you're that you're not seeing all the positive benefits that the ACA uh, brought in this country's healthcare system. There were a ton of people that didn't have access to healthcare before that have access now. And yes, yeah, some insurance premiums went up. This is what happens when you invite more people into a pool, uh, especially people that need it the most, sick people, you know. I know. Are, but the main problem the is that. that healthcare is still rationed off of wealth, okay? Like, Offering people access is just basically saying, here, now you can have health care. Now you won't get denied insurance, so you don't have to pay $400,000. But now you're going to have to pay $200,000 and still be in a tremendous amount of medical debt. The so devil. the difference is only marginal in comparison to uh, like the vulturous for-profit health care system that did not have any regulations whatsoever implemented on it. That's my point. And the best mm -hmm. way to solve that problem isn't by taking money from people and... Uh, and like forcing them into getting private insurance and like forcing uh, uh, everyone to get private insurance and essentially creating a wealth transfer between uh, people and, and uh, private insurance companies. The real uh, thing is having uh, the real thing is forcing the government to provide uh, at least a public option as a first step and then nationalize it in its entirety. I think one way you make progress is by not allowing false equivalents to fester in the national conversation rick scott denied the medical ex medicaid expansion of florida i'm unemployed so my life literally got worse under aca yeah I mean, that happens okay. too but that's a different combo because it would have I mean, been you can, terrible you can, with you can find individual i mean well whose fault is that is that obamacare's fault or is that rick scott's fault no 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 like, that's, you can find that's it certainly that's certainly the fault of the republican party which is ironically no matter what you do, Excuse is me. ironically sorry. always going to I'm fight against it, even if it's literally that. their own original health care. So if they're going to fight against CNN it, no matter what, if you're going to if they're going to call you socialist, no matter what, well, you might as well do some socialism, brother. That's my point. OK, that's what I've been advocating for since day one, which is the Republican Party is going to push back and obstruct every step of the way, no matter you how radical your agenda is or no matter how moderate your agenda your is. So if you go to that negotiating table, you if you go to that bargaining table with half of your chips wrong. already on the table saying here, we're giving it, we're conceding this conversation, we're conceding. Uh, before the conversation even begins, you keep losing and you keep moving further and further and further to the right. And that is precisely what happens well, under one neoliberal way, democratic one, one administrations. Way that you, one way that you stop the backward slide towards even more right wing politics in this country is by not laying down and let the Republican Party just fucking stomp all over this country. Wait, without but, any kind of without any kind of like. Did uh, you not say that that right wing slide continued under Barack Obama, just like it continued under Bill Clinton? In just some like, ways, sure, but in other in yeah, other ways, no. It was a shorter slide. It was a maybe a smaller slide than having like an actual Republican in a position of power, right? That's what you're saying. Well, now right? I think you I think you're getting a little general with it here because there are so many different like categories that we could talk about. Are we talking about foreign policy? Are we talking about healthcare? Are we talking about tax code? Are we talking about like cultural everything, issues? Are everything. About, everything. You know, Let's talk about talk, like everything but cultural issues. Uh, I will. Uh, well, everything but cultural, cultural issues, issues are pretty significant though because culture shapes politics and politics well, shapes culture. I agree culture. and I disagree. Here's where I agree. I think wedge issues created by the Republican Party more often than not are the cultural differences they create to exclusively polarize the two parties to make it seem like they're genuinely different. So they push for uh, even more 
uh, even even more cruel legislation exclusively so they can separate the base and act like they're totally different than the Democratic Party. This I do not disagree with you on at all. Having said mm -hmm. that, however, I mean, the Democratic Party also concedes on those points as well, uh, as evidenced by the fact that, uh, you know, neither Obama nor uh, Hillary Clinton was pro-gay marriage uh, until it was impossible for them not to be. So this is this is how it is. Tim Kaine is anti-abortion. You have plenty of conservative Democrats who are even co uh, conservative from a cultural point of view, and that's literally the only difference we have with the with the Republicans. So the I mean, I'm saying the choice here is between just surrendering yourself to this incredibly efficient and well-funded Republican machine. I disagree. Or, I'm doing or, everything or, I can. Or, or allying yourself with people that maybe don't line up exactly one to one. I'm not ex asking you to compromise every single one of your values. There's certainly some Dude, principles Democrats that I would voted. Never, the Democrats some voted for sanctions never on Iran by. after the Barack Obama administration uh, cr did like the one good thing where they were able to secure a denuclearization agreement. They literally put sanctions on Iran. They put sanctions on Venezuela that killed thousands of people. Like these guys literally vote for the Republican agenda every step of the way. They can't even fight back on fucking DACA, which is like has Excuse an 80% approval rating. I'm what? Why are we voting for Democrats they if they're just going to concede to the Republicans every step of the way? They are basically. What are they supposed to do with DACA? What do you mean? Um. What do you mean? What are they supposed to do with DACA? Do you not remember when the, the DACA chip negotiation was happening with uh, what? under Donald Trump? Are you talking about the like two months uh, into his administration wall? when uh, uh, when Trump said he is no longer going to continue DACA protections on Dreamers and, and the Democrats are, so what, uh, took that to a, a stalemate and the government had to they forced the government to a shutdown and then they conceded and they literally said they literally turned around and said you know I'm going to take Mitch McConnell's word on this that's what Chuck Schumer's uh, that's that's what Chuck Schumer uh, uh, froze the government shutdown on 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 a promise for Mitch McConnell I don't, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure what you mean here. Like the the, the Democrats, the Democrats you, did not defend you, Dreamers when they had uh, all of the bargaining power on the planet to defend Dreamers. Why didn't they do that? I'm not. I'm not 100. percent Do you not remember? Me. I'm telling you, Chuck Schumer what? literally said, "Oh, Mitch McConnell promised that he would bring DACA to the table as soon as we restarted uh, the government. As soon as the government shutdown was over." I think the Democrats have done a pretty decent job of going to bat for DACA for over the last three years. They've made it one of their... If it wasn't for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilhan Omar, Nancy, which Nancy Pelosi was very aggressively against, we wouldn't have even had specific allocations for better living conditions for the, the immigrants that we uh, cage okay, in facilities. Nancy Pelosi was upset at Ilhan Omar and Alexandria, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Rashida Tlaib for for making sure that there was specific mandates that ensured that a, a percentage of the money that was going to ICE was going to ensure better housing conditions and better facilities for the immigrants that the Trump administration was caging. Nancy mm -hmm. Pelosi was upset at that. Nancy Pelosi got mad at that and openly, uh, like literally openly went on media and, and criticized them over and over again. Without them, that would not... That that mandate would not have even passed. That provision would not have even uh, been implemented. Yeah, I agree that those they vote forces for every military bill. Those, those are they necessary vote. forces within the the Democratic Party. I wholeheartedly support Rashida Tlaib and Ilan Omar and Alexandria Cortez. God damn it, Ocasio Cortez. Okay, but uh, do you understand? Those are progressives. Those are those are people that are different than the Democratic Party. Those are people that if they did not exist, the Democratic Party would continue to give whatever Trump wants to Donald Trump and the Republicans while also maintaining the illusion that they're actually fighting back against Donald Trump. And the DNC fucking hates them. The DNC literally, the DCCC at least, literally created uh, a, a new... Like a new Excuse rule me. change to ensure that every single that. campaign uh, staffer that worked with them would be negligible, uh, would no longer be able to work in any other Democrat campaign if they were primarying uh, incumbents or if they were primarying uh, Democrats anywhere around the country, no yeah, matter how conservative are, those sir? Democrats are. Yes, there are powerful forces within the Democratic Party that are hampering uh, necessary progress, and uh, I will do everything that I can to, you know, turn out my people to make sure that we vote in progressives. But 
my my entire point uh, is that I, I I I just really take issue with the idea that there are only marginal differences and uh, and it really kind after of after all the stuff me. that I just it mentioned, really kinda, you, it really it really yes after all that yes and and that, like and it really kind of unsettles me and unnerves me a little bit that you wouldn't even commit to the hy- hypothetical situation of Pete Buttigieg getting the ticket you wouldn't commit to voting for him over Donald Trump and and implied that there are only marginal differences between those two. But after everything I just mentioned to you, if they're if they are giving Trump everything that Trump wants for the most part, I don't think that's true. Giving Trump can you give me examples of what they've successfully pushed back on? The border wall, dude. The border wall is bullshit. Like it's literally bullshit. It's the border wall. What do you mean? They 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 held their ground on that. It's just no, they didn't. Trump still maintained. Trump still was able to bring in thirteen billion dollars from the discretionary yeah, spending to the military that the Democrats raised to the border but, wall. He took money from FEMA and he took money from the military discretionary spending that Democrats fucking signed off on bipartisan. No, he had to go through the courts to get the border wall done, dude. Trump's that military the, budget was given to him by the Democrats. You understand that, right? He took money from understand. the military budget that the Democrats had given him and put it into the border wall. And it's yeah, a bullshit, they, it's they, a bullshit yeah, racist know, symbol okay, anyway. But they didn't, they didn't fucking know that he was going to do that. They didn't fucking approve that military bu- budget with so why $13 did he, million dollars carved out for them to build a border wall. So why did, he, so why did the, the Democrats approve of <laughs> Donald Trump's uh, military budget without even questioning it. As a matter of fact, not just approve his military budget, but gave him more money than he had originally asked for his first year in, in Congress when everyone was talking about how de- damaging and how devastating Donald Trump was. The the military budget conversation... Which, by the way, that's right. unsuccessful. The, the, it just I was the, looking for you to give me a successful example, but it turns out that was unsuccessful as well. Are You're talking about um, policy positions that Donald Trump wanted to get done, but the Democrats have blocked since they've taken the House? Um, since they're taking the House, even before that, like, what have, I, what have, they, what have the Democrats successfully pushed back on? Like, why, um, they, why they, should they I did, vote for a Democrat did, instead wait, of not wait, vote? Did, Pitch me the wait, idea. They, they, Sell me the idea they, on why I should vote for a Democrat instead of not because, voting at all. Because they saved the health care system as we have it right now. The broken they, health care system they, they that they it, literally... Doesn't, can, Okay, besides, great example. Besides, besides the point, though, you're you're missing the point. Great entirely. example. How do they he save it with John wait, McCain? On, right? Wait, 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 wait. They wait, saved it with John McCain, it. right? They saved it because he, John McCain was able to to switch sides, and he gave that legendary they thumbs saved up moment. It because they saved it because they were unified. They took back the house because they ran good uh, grassroots campaigns uh, running on health care. And uh, that was a huge rebuke to the Trump administration. That was one of his major policy proposals when he, when he was running in the first place, was repealing and, there were Republicans and, and, and town replacing halls. Obamacare. There were Republicans and, and Republican uh, town halls pushing back against this as well. You don't think, even you even don't then, think the without Democratic John McCain, Party, they wouldn't have been able to do it. The Democratic Party as an institution was instrumental in making sure that they didn't dismantle the ACA and thus throw tens of millions of Americans off the health care system. Okay. Get rid of the protections for okay. pre-existing conditions. Hold on. You know let me all right, do you want me to do you want me to describe the situation there? One, John McCain was the reason why luckily we were able to stop the Obamacare repeal and replacement. But fuck John and, McCain. What? And here's why. Wait, because what? a month because one month later, or or I guess two months later, I don't know the exact timeline, they still p- pushed a, a fourteen trillion dollar tax cut on corporations of the wealthy, in which they also were able to delete the individual mandate, which was literally what the Democrats were pushing back against because it would implode the Obamacare marketplaces. And now that the individual mandate has been uh, destroyed, which John McCain and other Democrats were even uh, uh, talking about how they would potentially vote for this tax cut if it was done correctly, uh, has has still had the same effect on Obamacare. The marketplaces are still in effect. They're still working, but uh, they're no longer funded by the individual mandate, which was literally one of the provisions that John McCain and the Democrats saved. So technically, no, they didn't even save that. Well, how the fuck were they supposed to save that? If you have a minority in the House, you have a minority in the Senate, what the fuck are you supposed to do? That's my... Okay, so that's the problem, is that when you we a, always when you put our unified- hands up. You could stop. You could. You could... You could freeze, uh, you could push the government to a government shutdown by not pushing for a budget. You could stop, you could obstruct any step of the way. Democrats, I mean, Republicans did this very successfully under Mitch McConnell when Barack was Obama was president. Budget. Democrats this cannot do it, was, it for some weird it was reason. One of the first things, it was one of the first things that Donald Trump tried to do when he was off for do, all the budget conversations. Do what the Republicans do. I think Republicans are very good at doing politics, okay? I think they're very good. They're sneaky bastards. They're terrible. They're horrible vultures. But if you were to do what the Republicans do 
you would actually be effective. And my big problem with the Democratic Party is that they can't. They can't stonewall because I partially think that they don't want to. One, because they're cowards. And two, because they're represented by the same interests, the same benefactors that the Republican Party is represented by. So like, say for example, the defense budget. So let's play out a hypothetical where the Democrats shut down Congress to, uh, uh, in opposition to um, Trump's proposed, uh, or shut down the government in, oppos in opposition to Trump's proposed military budget. How do you think that would play out for them in 2020 in it would america play out, what do you mean it would play out you, great you, galvanizing your base against the republican party is is awesome you That's, think that they you're would using republican about, talking points on me now but i think that would be great it's like it's like asking the question how do you think how do you think republicans would uh fare in the general election when they're you know uh, pushing for a complete and and total uh, abortion ban your, how do you think that how do you think that polarizes uh, they the electorate. Yeah, that's the they point. Would your wing of the party, which is a no, wing not of just my wing of the party. It would polarize. It would polarize the country. But that's the point. You're you supposed to make a better. You're Democrats supposed to lead. That's what leaders are supposed that to we do. We need to win in 2020. You don't think you think we would galvanize like the moderate white voters in like Michigan to like for, shut down the government for you know a month or two months or whatever, and it just to not pass a military budget? Dude, why, again, this is cuck mentality, Hutch. I'm afraid to tell you this. Oh. McConnell, when McConnell denied, when McConnell denied Barack Obama a Supreme Court justice, do you think that anyone in the Republican party was saying, oh my God, how will this galvanize the libs? I mean, we gotta really make sure that we don't really get libs to come out in full force okay, against whoever we put But it galvanized the shit out of the Republican Party because they're completely unified in opposition to the Democratic Party. There are yeah, very maybe the Democratic issues. Party would be more unified if we had discernible policy positions that we actually advocated for and had some backbone when that's trying to implement primaries, those uh, agendas or when okay, we're obstructing the Republicans. Are about. That's what these primaries are about. We're doing that right now. We're deciding as a party right now which uh, platforms we want to pursue. Want to exactly. And guess what? I happen to Get think that my side is is low. in your side as well because you like uh, uh, you like Bernie Sanders as well. I think our side is correct. I think our side is actually fighting back, and our side Excuse actually has. Me. A Sorry. different agenda, a different control. agenda from the Republican Party, but more so a different agenda from the Democratic establishment and neoliberalism in general. That respects the okay. Rule of law. Well, listen, you call me a cock, and that's okay. I'm gonna. No, it. no, I, I'm not saying you're a cock. I'm you saying said like what you said, it, son. No, you no, said what you said. I'm sorry. No, Hutch, come on, come on. I love you. I, that's not what I mean. I mean like we have a cuck mentality. Liberals just have a cuck mentality, and I wish we could get out of it and we could fight back a little bit more. You know what I mean? I, I do, yeah. And I do hope that that's the outcome eventually, but I do think you also have to play a little bit of politics yeah, in the meantime. Well, and you, and we have to fucking wait, man. That's I think that's an unfortunate reality. I hope it's not true. I think it's an unfortunate reality that we also have to do a bit of laying the groundwork and waiting for the older generation to die off and the younger generation, which is by and large the, uh, um, overwhelmingly progressive. And you will start to see very fast changes um, happen. I know you and I kind of disagree on on that one because you think that it's just going to be the same fight twenty years from now. But I just I I don't see that how that's going to be possible. And in the meantime, I do think that uh, I agree with you. I think that we need to play smart politics. Uh, we need to start playing um, by the same kind of rules that the Republicans are playing. Uh, but we also have to pick our battles, and we also have to. Fucking just not I think, fucking I think fight all the time. The fucking die accuse the goddamn Iowa caucuses of like rigging it against Bernie and shit like that. I just uh, I, but why? I think, if 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 the DNC is a significant hurdle and they have presented themselves as a significant hurdle in uh, pushing for a radical progressive agenda that is demonstrably popular, if they're doing everything they can and coordinating with the media, then I see that as a barrier. I see that as a barrier for the progressive platform, and I'm sick and tired of. Uh, of backing down from criticizing the DNC. The, oh Donald Trump was incredibly successful in criticizing the RNC and he, he, he fucking won. They, you know what they, they were all tweeting a couple days ago, all those fucking ghouls. They were all tweeting that the fucking DNC is doing it again. They're rigging Yeah, because it. they want to, they, because stealing, they want to pick up, because they want to pick up disenfranchised votes. Bernie voters. They want, and it's going to work. Well, it's of gonna course work. it's going to work. So the DNC should maybe 
not be a bunch of fucking corrupt shitlords who can't even do the one thing that they're supposed to do, which is like calculate votes, man. <laughs> it's not that hard. It's all, we're also going to have a better chance if we don't go down these rabbit holes, I think. Anyways, listen, I appreciate the conversation. I, uh, I do I like, too. I hope you, I, I, I like, hope this was good and, and entertaining no, and informative. 